bring in and focus the agriculture sector with a fresh perspective on fish farming as well as importation. In Nigeria, like many coastal developing countries, fish is an important source of food for the population, which is currently standing well over 200 million. A recent study also estimates that Nigeria ranks about third globally for the number of people dependent on coastal fisheries for food and nutrition security. And the demand for fish is growing fast, alongside growth in population and income. Now, however, there is a growing disparity between local fish production capacity current demand and importation value. Now, volume, there are also growing calls for the ban on fish importation, which will save Nigeria about $1 billion in foreign exchange in importation of fish annually. As at the year 2003, Nigeria became the largest producer of catfish in Africa. Now, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Sabu Nanone, also says that following federal government's effort to encourage local production, Nigeria may stop fish importation in the year 2022. Well, joining me now live in our Lagos studio to discuss this development and much more, I have with me uh, African farmer Mogaji. Good to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. Now, how disappointing is it that we have to spend a sum of no less than $1 billion importing fish into Nigeria annually? It's not disappointing uh, because we don't, we've not invested in the infrastructure. So if we invest in the infrastructure and the value chain to support and make the fish available, then we can say it's disappointing. So it's not disappointing. Mm. If you do not fund and support it, then you only have to import. So the reality is that we've not paid attention to it. There's a growing disparity between our local production capacity, the current demand we have on ground, as well as the volume of importation we've seen so far. Now, what are some of the pressing issues that we have that makes the Nigerian market less competitive, mm. even to settle local production demands? Yes, so um, the value chain. And unfortunately, mm. in Nigeria, in any sector in agriculture, we still don't approach it from a value chain perspective. So everybody is just talking around, including the Ministry of Agriculture, talking about the one billion for importation. But the value chain that will make the fish available, one, maize and soya, is still imported in the country. Mm. We don't produce enough for humans. Talk less for Talk, fish feed. And we don't even produce enough for poultry. <laughs> Talk less of fish mm. and the other livestock. So the question is, it, and it starts, the value chain starts from policy. Policy always some assault. So let's leave policy. The chemicals, the seeds that you will use to plant the corn is imported. So when the price of dollar goes up, the value chain has a challenge. So when you look at it across, the feed, the feed, I stand to be corrected, but over 70% of the players in the fish, uh, especially the freshwater fish, mm. they import the feed. Netherlands, France, Israel. So when you import feed, a, a few people produce, and the few people who produce is what we need uh, government to fund, or we need the private sector to raise the required investment for that sector. And also, private sector, stop blaming government. Take responsibility. Do what has to be done. Pl project. The private sector doesn't project 10 years, 20 years. They project two, three, four years. So they will not be sustainable. So mm. private sector is actually not ready for the business. And government, the policy keeps some assaulting. So, so it's, it's a well, challenge. Well, private sector players still have their excuses here and there. And then, for example, we still also import fertilizer. Although we still have some local production units here and there, it's still not enough. If you have an interaction with a feed producer in Nigeria, they'll still mm. raise their issues uh, that concerned them. But now, at this point in time, with the forecast we've heard from the Minister of Agriculture stating that by the year 2022, hopefully, Nigeria is going to ban the importation of fish or even provision for forex for that matter. Do you think we've created a sustainable blueprint? Talk less, let's start off with a, a plan of action before we now talk of a blueprint. Do you think we have any sort of draft before we take quite a radical approach as Bani, like we've seen with rice production? Some have said, well, this forces local demand production and then we get to go along with the times. So, you see, um, 
It's again rather unfortunate that in the country you have the people at the elm of affairs just come to the media and make bold pronouncements without any data to back it up. So if you would ban it in 2022, what infrastructure do you have to take advantage of the opportunity? There's a Federal College of Freshwater Fisheries in Mina. It's like a desert when you compare it to 30 years ago. The infrastructure is, you, you know, it's research, training. So if the government training apparatus is not in place, how do you keep updating the knowledge? That's one. So when he says they're going to ban it, they're going to ban it or restrict um, Forex in 2022, what has been done? The question, does he also, know, has he played in the sector? Does he know the sector? And so talking and just placing all those things doesn't work. And the moment they say that, unfortunately, new players will get deceived and rush in. So the current players, how are they uh, thriving? Do they have any support? We will hear of Anchor Bora for this, for that. What do we have for the fish value chain? So is it in 2021 that we're going to start it? And in one year, and Thailand, and even Ghana, all these other countries have invested over years. We need to have a comparative advantage. We cannot say they will ban fish totally. What do we have comparative advantage on? And that's where the minister should be saying, we will ban maybe tilapia importation. Because we can do it, but we don't have the comparative advantage. We don't have power, and we can use solar. But have you supported, because tilapia you know, goes bad very fast. Are, do, are you supporting the tilapia association? And is even the tilapia association, I know they always try to talk to government. Well, and, and, and most of the regulators don't listen. It's like, you know, cat and mouse, Mickey Mouse transaction. So bottom line is that if they attempt to ban it, the same way they ban corn and unban, when they ban corn, we came here and said, come, they will unban it. Because if you cannot interpret the times, you can, if you don't understand the, time, uh, the seasons, you cannot interpret the times. So bottom line is that they need to pay attention to the realities and not what they read. The realities, engage the stakeholders, get them, know what they need, know their challenges, and prefer a solution, not a feel-good solution. Most of what happens is feel-good. Again, if they ban it, they would unban it. Well, it still seems like reality is a far-fetched between government and the stance of the players within the sector. But do you think now, assessing the Minister of Agriculture's performance so far, mm. in terms of engagement with key players, do you think there has been an interface to have a proper understanding in the area of research, in the area of performance index, in the area of keeping tabs on growth or any sort of decline in the sector? Do you think we've had any of those so far? I, How would you rate the engagement? I, I believe the minister needs to up his game uh, concerning the clear and present challenges that Nigeria faces with food security. Mm. The minister needs to be in the media. He needs to be engaging stakeholders. We need to feel him. Abuja is far from, when I say Abuja, I mean the ministry is far from the real players. So, yes, you engage a couple of people, but you need to be up and going. And, and I'm sorry, and that's where age comes in. You have to be vibrant, or you have the minister of state who is vibrant. You can't have aged people at federal minister and minister of state. One has to be vibrant. The federal minister can be a senior citizen, but the minister of state needs to be up and going. You need real information. You need to be going unannounced. Because, you see, these places are far. We don't have the right technology to monitor things. So the minister is, can do better engaging stakeholders across the value chain. And the thing is, once you engage maybe tomato, National Tomato Stakeholders Association, once you engage them, you must engage fertilizer. You must engage input. These things is not working. It's not working. And I'm concerned for 2021. What happened in 2020? with the drought in Southwest, especially for Southwest, had been happening for the last three years. So for next year, it, it might, might yeah, and already this year we don't have enough. 
we, don't, we didn't have enough for 2020, and the weather this year has not supported enough for 2021. So we need the minister to engage the private sector. We need the minister to engage the Chamber of Commerce, because the Chamber of Commerce is hybrid between government and private sector. And the Chamber of Commerce is in every state. You know, so we need more engagements. If I may button here, you work with the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and at this point in time, you'd have had quite a lot of interface with farmers within the subsector of fisheries. Mm. Now, if we were to create a blueprint, yes. working uh, plans that we could work along, using Lagos as a model state, mm. and then creating hubs, let's take, for example, within the Southwest region, yeah. for example, how do we create a workable hub to ensure that we have local production for fish grow, and then we can meet to the demand, and then we can now start talking about processing and other areas that we can explore within the sector? Yeah, um, sometime in May, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, through the president, uh, organized a regional program, you know, as a pilot where let's look at food production and food security from you know a regional perspective in the region you speak the same language you have things close to each other so a regional approach would drive us closer to food security as against individual states so we brought the south west uh, um, commissioners of agriculture together to commit to one or two areas in which they will work with each other now using lagos as a case study we need to leverage our comparative advantage. And we need to stop mirroring other states, trying to use the advantage of other states. So Lagos now has water. As against rail or road that everybody's talking about, we can move food from Ogun through Ikorodu, through Ekwe, to Lagos. And Lagos needs to be the biggest exporter of vegetables in the whole of West Africa with the potential of the whole of Africa because Egypt is doing better. Lagos has the better climate. Lagos has the port. Lagos has Badagri. Lagos has Ekwe. Lagos has Ikorodu. And the lands, we, you know, there's nothing like Lagos doesn't have land. Lagos has enough land to be the leading exporter of vegetables mm. across. Ghana is doing it. We only need to be able to embrace and bring in development part, developmental partners and have a policy focus. And... I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic because the new Commissioner of Agriculture uh, is favorably disposed to ideas and beyond ideas implementation. So I think we're on the right path. We only need, you know, government, as in the budgets to reflect that the food security is important to us. And the next conversation line is looking at the budgetary allocation we've seen over the years in terms of agriculture. Do you think that's convincing enough mm -hmm. if we are talking about making it the mainstay? For so many uh, players in the sector, it's almost like a drop in the mighty ocean that can barely sustain any activity. There's a Maputo declaration. You know, we signed all these declarations. I have a copy. And it was made available for me outside the country mm. by foreign um, organization. And so we agreed to um, make our budget, 10% of every budget should go to agriculture. Rwanda and other countries that have done it will see the development. So we can be talking nationally about um, diversifying into agriculture. It, it contributes the biggest to GDP. But our budget does not reflect, reflect that we want to milk or leverage or scale up or maximally um, take advantage of what contributes to the, to the GDP. Hmm. You know, so our budget doesn't reflect that we are ready to take in the right direction. When the budget reflects you know, increment of 10%, the private sector will rush into the value chains. So we're not ready. We're still talking about it. Do you think in the short term there is any measure we can take to ensure that we beat down the prices of the imported feeds that we have? Do you think we can work? Yes, it would take a whole lot of mac uh, macroeconomic indices as well as fiscal and monetary policies to help stabilize the Naira because that's what exchange, foreign exchange highly determines how much we get these feeds. Now, do you think in the short term there's anything we can do to bring down the cost of these feeds? The reality is no. That's the reality. We should plan with reality to say, okay, we don't have enough corn for humans. We don't have for livestock. Mm. So we don't have in our, in, in our silos, reserves. So if we don't have it, then we cannot, take, we cannot cushion it. 
So okay. we should just work with that and plan for the future. Plan for two years and get the job done. Hopefully we have much more engagement and then we also see the Minister of Agriculture also call for a whole lot of dialogue. It's we have so many feet pinched at this point in time and it's time to take action. Enough of all of the talk. Agric must be the mainstay. Thank you very much for your time Thank on you the show today. Thank you. Uh, so far, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and with your work with the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry as the chairman of the Agric Group. We just hope that the interface also continues. African farmer, farmer Mogaji, thank you very much once again. Thank you for having me.